It's 24 divided by 9 fifths, which is the same thing as 24 times 5 ninths. And then likewise, 4 divided by 4 fifths, which is 4 times 5 fourths. 4 times 5 fourths gives us 5. And 24 times 5 ninths is 40 thirds. Just 13 and 1 third. So picking the smallest positive ratio tells us to pivot on the 4 fifths. Okay, so after performing the indicated uh, row operations to pivot where we talked about, we end up at the following tableau, which notice we're still feasible. y sub 1 is a positive 15, y sub 2 is 0, y sub 3 is 5, s sub 1 and s sub 2 are 0. The problem is we're still not optimal, so we want to perform another pivot operation. In this case, by selecting the largest non-negative entry in the last row. In this case, there's a tie, so we'll just choose one of the two columns. And in this case, we look at our ratios. 15 divided by 5 fourths is 15 times 4 fifths, which is 12. In the second ratio, notice we get 5 divided by a negative 1 fourth, which is the same thing as 5 times a negative 4. But remember, we don't want to choose the pivot element where the element from the pivot column is 0 or negative. Therefore, this one is not even a candidate, so we will need to pivot on the 5 fourths. Okay, so again, by pivoting on the 5 fourths in the fourth column, first row, we need to perform the given row operations. After performing those row operations, we should get the following tableau. Notice, yet again, we are still feasible. y sub 1 and y sub 2 are 0. y sub 3 is a positive 8. s sub 1 is a positive 12. s sub 2 is 0. So we're feasible, but we're not yet optimal because there is still another negative entry in the last row. And so we need to choose our pivot column by finding the most negative entry in the last row. And then find our pivot element by computing the ratios. 12 divided by a negative 9 fifths is 12 times a negative 5 ninths. Again, note that that is a negative, therefore it is not a candidate for a pivot. So we have to be pivoting on the 4 fifths. So let's pivot again and see what happens. Okay, after performing that last pivot operation in the given row operations with our tableau, we end up at this tableau, which turns out to be the final tableau because you notice that we're still in the feasible region. We have a basic feasible solution y sub 1 is 0, y sub 2 is 10, y sub 3 is 0, s sub 1 is 30, s sub 2 is 0. Notice that the last row has no negative entries, except for the last entry, which does not matter. Therefore, we are at the optimal value. Now notice, because we took the original minimization problem and rewrote it as maximize the opposite of w, right? z is the opposite of w. Therefore, our minimum value is not negative 20, but it's the opposite of negative 20, which is a positive 20. We can pull the values for y sub 1, y sub 2, and y sub 3 right out of the tableau. y sub 1 is non-basic, therefore 0. y sub 2, that column, has its 1 in the second row, telling us that y sub 2 has a value of 10. y sub 3 is non-basic, therefore it has the value of 0. And that gives us a non-standard linear programming problem where we had to rewrite the objective by maximizing the opposite of the objective function. And also by using not only slack variables that we've seen before, but a surplus variable.